back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and talk about all the fun things going on in the world of Linux open source. And uh, hey, man, we were even talking about uh, FreeSync, like right up first. Stay tuned for yeah. that. Oh, yes. And then it's chill. Peter's back again two yeah. weeks in a row. It's a new record. <laughs> Can't believe it. Um, <laughs> so I what's up? Two weeks. So, yeah, yeah two weeks, man. Are, are you still uh, keeping everything real on the island? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, I'm basically looking at what the heck the NHS is going to be doing uh, with the, um, the, you know, the whole Brexit thing. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. Uh, that's interesting because they've been sending out emails saying, oh, yeah, everyone who is an EEA citizen, we're looking at things, we're keeping an eye on it. But once we know everything, uh, something concrete, we'll, we'll let you know. It's like, okay, please don't take too long. <laughs> <laughs> Fun times. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Joe, what's going on? You went to Disneyland. Yes, I did. I just spent three days at Disneyland over the last week. And actually, I'm looking, really looking forward to the Star Wars Galaxy Edge to open because all the computer graphics for the land and the rides are created in Linux. So that, that's that been, I've been really looking forward to that at, when I found out about that several years ago. So that was really cool. <laughs> right on, right on. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm playing with a bunch of things. Actually, um, NVIDIA. Yay, I'm an NVIDIA shill <laughs> still because I, I genuinely yes. just sat through the AMD uh, keynote. Yes. And that was like, yes. changed my mind because NVIDIA is like, yo, you know that still overpriced but not insanely priced uh, RTX card with the new NVIDIA encoder on it? Yeah, we, we released that and we got some new things coming out with NVIDIA. And I was like, okay, fine. Actually, if I'm going to be honest, I went to pre-order it yesterday and they wouldn't let me. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> However, let's wait and see what AMD has at the keynote. And unfortunately, not much. So, yeah. Good news I in mean, the future. It is with... much. It's seven hundred seven hundred dollars. Much. <laughs> yes. It's seven, but I mean, am I alone? I, I was genuinely expecting the theorized from you know the three hundred dollar navi mm -hmm. you know ten yeah. seven everyone yeah. was expecting yeah. navi but they yeah. didn't deliver on that <sighs> no. wah, wah. still good we news did get about Ryzen Epic. 3. yeah and Ryzen three yeah. triplets and all that so yeah. good news on that just not on the GPU front and let's not pretend otherwise. Anyway, yeah let me continue being an NVIDIA <laughs> shill by introducing our first story, the graphics card that supports FreeSync from NVIDIA. What am I talking about, Pedro? Have I lost it finally? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> it's not just uh, a graphics card. It's going to be a driver thing. And yeah, apparently NVIDIA released a bit of news on the 6th saying, yeah, uh, G-Sync compatible monitors. Um, it's like, okay, so it's just more monitors that are going to support G-Sync? No, as it turns out, FreeSync monitors... Uh, that NVIDIA have, they already have a little list that you can see on screen right now. Um, and that particular list lists a bunch of uh, FreeSync monitors that NVIDIA themselves have uh, confirmed that they work just fine with NVIDIA's G-Sync technology. Of course, they don't have that stupid little DRM chip because that's what it is. Uh, but it's uh, it's very good to see. Uh, I have a 3840 by 2160 monitor right here in front of me that uh, mm -hmm. has free sync. And that would be very, very nice to see. And even if you don't have a monitor that's officially supported by NVIDIA, they say they're going to give you an option to just basically play around it at will. It's like, you okay. Ooh. Enable a uh, variable refresh rate uh, on the driver, and then if your monitor supports it, you can try and get it to work yourself. Good luck, but you're basically on your own at that point. But I like that. It's mm -hmm. actually really nice to see. Of course, it still remains to be seen when the Linux drivers will support this. <laughs> well, um, I think we're going to be seeing that. Uh, I think uh, kernel 5 not RC1, we're starting to see. Yeah, yes. Of free free sync sync. Support. That's <laughs> but thing. we'll get to yeah. that. <laughs> well, one of the things I'm a little bit worried about because I've been watching um, people experimenting with the non approved uh, free sync monitors. Not pretty. Yeah. Not pretty yeah. at all, mm -hmm. especially on the ultra wide. And a lot of that boils down to 
FreeSync was something manufacturers could implement without paying, you know, the NVIDIA tax. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of stuff out there that's like, hey, it's FreeSync. And what they mean by that is it's variable refresh between 50 and like 52 mm. hertz. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, yeah, that's what most do. It's like, oh, between 45 and 60. That That's your variable uh, refresh window right there. I don't know, man. I thought everyone was saving up for the, uh, what was it, the X65. You know, one of the big displays from NVIDIA that had G-Sync, which is like a measly five grand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or that uh, really insane 3440 by 1440 Asus uh, one that... Uh, yeah, it has G-Sync between, I think it's uh, 33 or 32 hertz and 100 hertz. So, yeah. <laughs> Could be a thing, Joe. Um, What's going on? Yeah. I Well, I was just really happy that the news was unveiled at CES. We've gotten a lot of really good news this year from CES that we can cover that will affect us on Linux, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to... Uh, testing this because I do have actually I have two FreeSync monitors, but I have one 30, 30 inch uh, bank um, being B E N Q uh, monitor um, that supports FreeSync. So I'm I'm hoping that'll that's one I can do with G Sync because I'm using an Nvidia card on this system. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun so, to play around awesome. with. Um, I'm definitely to save money going to get. Uh, another uhd display with free sync so i'll play with it i, I got a feeling though it's gonna be like huh that's that's neat let's cut that off <laughs> i honestly don't see it's like if you can get it to work then you might as well just leave it on because it shouldn't affect anything else well, right <laughs> all right a lot of free sync monitors you can do one or the other you can do hdr or you can do free sync all right, yeah. mine doesn't have HDR, yeah. so I'll take free things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, coming up next, XFC Zumbuntu 2018 year in review. And kind of interesting because mm -hmm. we got to look yes. out for 414. It, it's mm -hmm. so close. Yeah. It's totally coming. It's so close. <laughs> man. <laughs> Q3 2137. No later than that, man. Uh, <laughs> You know, as much as the community, myself included, we enjoy um, giving the XFC project good ribbing about their Glacia pace. <laughs> you know, progress is still being made towards 414. 2018, mostly about bug fixes and adding a bit of polish to it. And I know stuff like that doesn't make for sexy headlines. But it's one of the reasons I use this desktop manager. Because this team has never released like a half-baked pile of junk with a bunch of eye candy, you know, tacked on it to impress the lowest common denominator. I'm not naming names. KD, uh, no. Listen, man, <laughs> I'm happy with it. However, I'm going to say there is something to be said for an actual release date, maybe sticking to it other than perpetual development. <laughs> I mean, it is their project. They don't really have yeah. anyone, you know, threatening to cut their uh, income if they don't deliver. So, yeah, it's like, okay, we'll, we'll release it when we feel like it, literally. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, one of the things that still needs a bit more work is Thunar. Because, <laughs> <Yes>. um, <laughs> no, it doesn't. Is... Yeah, it does. <laughs> you want it to because... do something other than <laughs> display files. No, I want it to be able to display files differently per folder. That's all I want. That's all I'm asking for. It's you go to your pictures folder. You have it set to like the big icons with the thumbnail so you can yes. see which pictures are which. And then you go to your downloads folder and you want to have like a more condensed list because chances are you have a load of stuff in there. And then you go to your documents and maybe you want to see like which documents are which and you have it in full details, like with all the details and mm -hmm. everything else. So if it could only actually remember <laughs> per folder, that's all I'm asking Exactly. For. Per yeah. folder settings for uh, file viewing, mm -hmm. that's all I want. That's that's all it needs. Okay. Um, what, what DM do you use right now? Um, <laughs> I'm using Mate. Okay. I, I just want everyone to take a good look. This is the equivalent of someone saying, when this game shows up on Linux, I'm switching. 
I'm, I don't plan to switch to XFCE. I'm simply pointing out a shortcoming of Thunar. Thunar. That's it. <laughs> they defend themselves the same way. Jill, uh, yeah. what do you think about this? So I actually have been really impressed with the recent cadence of updates that XFCE has had in the last year and that we've been able to cover them so regularly here on LWW. You know, there was a time that XFCE wasn't getting that many updates. So this has just really <laughs> been need it. What? <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> well, you know, it was very, very stable. So that's that's what we all love about it. It's it's light and stable. Um, but this over this last year, it, they've added new display profiles men, uh, menu in the um, XFCE display settings panel. A new version of Catfish 1.4.6 was released, they and not that only name, Jill. I know <laughs> Catfish, <laughs> and not only is it used as the default file search app for XFCE, but it is now an XFCE project. So that was huge news this last year. And lots of visual improvements, including updated, updating icon themes and cleaner and more modern looking user interface. Uh, just really awesome. And lots of bug fi fixes. So it's just, just helping XFCE all that much more. And it really, it really needed to be kind of updated to the modern times in terms of look and feel. So um, that's just been really awesome. <laughs> Yeah, GTK3 support yeah. for all the themes. So, yeah. uh, GTK3 mm. support, oh, <laughs> uh, under and over before everything goes to GTK4 on the GNOME side. Mm. Uh, I, yeah, see, that's the thing. They're taking their sweet time with GTK4. <laughs> they are. But, I mean, back to the point, they're doing good work. And, you know, I, I live vicariously through Pedro and you're like, this is crashing. <laughs> this doesn't work. I Aww. I would torture system <laughs> if my desktop manager ever crashed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why yeah. I uh, I stopped using Hitty. <laughs> uh, uh, Gimp Giggle. Oh, I <laughs> I'm excited about this. This is Gimp and Giggle have made progress have made great progress in 2018. Uh, Pat David and his team have done an incredible job with the release of GIMP 2.10 last April and the many updates to GIMP this last year, including updated user interface, high bit depth support, multi-threading, GPU side processing, linear color space workflow, revamping color management, new transformation tools, new interface themes, and a more streamlined file dialogue filter, just to name a few. And there have been a lot more. It's been really incredible, the, the progress that the team has had on, on GIMP and Gaggle. And what I'm excited for is in the coming year, um, here are a few more updates that I'm I'm really looking forward to. GIMP 3.0 will be relying on GTK3. Awesome. CMYK is now a first-class citizen in Gaggle and will be more fully implemented in GIMP. A GIMP extension repository will be added in the future to easily install plugins and effects. And one of my favorite <laughs> items, more animation support improvements via the the Marmont project, which Marmont project, which is working on the first feature length 2D animation film fully produced with free software, including the GIMP, Blender, and our door, et cetera, et cetera. And if you donate to their project um, on Patreon, you get your name in the credits of the upcoming movie. So that's really cool and a great way to support the GIMP and I don't their projects. Know. I, I don't know how I feel about <laughs> um, somebody like getting credits after becoming a patron. It's, that seems like a good yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, yeah. <laughs> Who would do such a thing? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, my thing about uh, GIMP, and this is not directly related to GIMP as more distro maintainers that provide GIMP in their repositories. Can we please yeah. have 2.10 be the default now? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. I mean, they even made a post about it, so can, can we mm -hmm. can we make that official? Because having to install a PPA on Ubuntu, having to uh, install a copper if you're using anything mm -hmm. other than Fedora 29, uh, it's... Yeah, it, how are people supposed to provide feedback if you're not making, you know, making it easier 
for people to just play with it and people have to go out of their way to install 2.10 come on distro maintainers (laughs) come on (laughs) yeah man i don't know i mean it's got a couple of things they are definitely looking for contributors to help with usability user manuals user interface translations tutorials and Mm -hmm. programming i don't know about usability at this point i think we've all just learned how to deal with it and it's gotten a lot better over the years and they have studio mode if you want to be lazy about things where it just puts yeah. everything in one window and yep. it's like, well, that's, that's nice. and then you can set it to full screen and have that display just be your thing that you're working on yeah it's a great so project. it looks more like photoshop <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know if that's necessarily a good thing uh yeah. great project i've been using it for whew, well over 15 years and uh Good to see it moving forward. But yes. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, <laughs> you want to run Photoshop TM on Linux, Pedro. Mm. <laughs> well, the way you have been, <laughs> yes. chances are, have been able to run uh, Photoshop on Linux is by using Wine. And Codeweaver is one of the big companies out there that are actively working and developing for Wine. Uh, they have put out a little bit of a... Um, tutorial course thing it is very in depth so let's go with course because it is a they say it'll come in six parts and part one and two are currently already available and part one is the wine ecosystem and they basically give you like a very broad overview of what wine is and uh, the several different versions that are available which uh it is very nicely written but i do have to raise an issue when they say the when they get to the bit about upstream wine they say this is the canonical version of wine and i'm like no no mark shuttleworth have had nothing to do with this (laughs) what are you on about and then i realized that they meant it in the actual literal and literary sense Mm. of the word canonical so yes yeah wording it's important (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that threw me off too pedro when i was yeah, reading I was like, it no but it could not have nothing to do oh i see what you're doing <laughs> yeah well i this is so very you know well written like pedro was saying i'm gonna give this link to linux noobs developers and my students it's Oh, it's really concise and thorough. And, uh, you know, this is one of the number one questions I get from new Linux users. What is wine? <laughs> so this is <laughs> great. This <drink>. is great. <laughs> yeah. It's great yes. drink because what new Linux users are saying, how do I play Fortnite, bro? I'm going to play my Fortnite. Um, wine, uh, wine is not an emulator. <laughs> so. And it no longer stands for that, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah, um, I know. <laughs> check it out. It's two parts, man. That first part, it did an excellent job explaining what wine is. And, you know, like the adult beverage, it comes in many flavors. You know, they bring out proton code weavers, <laughs> basically bankrolling it and doing yes. a great job. If you're looking for that yes. for business and you want it support behind it, they can help you out. I mean, they have uh, been doing that for a long, long time. Good piece of kit. Part two, acquiring and building the beast, which is wine. Part three is going to go into mm-hmm. using wine as a developer. And uh, yeah. all of it's interesting. I think a lot of people have been introduced to wine. Maybe you weren't because Valve walked out with Proton and they made it a yeah. one-click ordeal. You're wondering how you're playing this Windows games with you know varying degrees of success. That's wine behind that. So, excellent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically, it's teaching game developers how to release their games with Proton and maybe get whitelisted. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, very true that. <laughs> okay, high five. Yeah, so we. Oh, this is five. exciting. Turns out we get an even better New Year's present from Linus Torvalds. Linux kernel 4.20 is now 5.0 because Linus quote can ran out of fingers and toes to count on (laughs) that's the official reason that's what he said yes that's what he said that's the reason (laughs) and uh this is this is uh really awesome also in this release amd has seen some love in the form of tweaks to the handling of cpu microcode as well as the arrival of 
free sweet sink in the kernel being supported by the kernel awesome oh yes <laughs> yes very important there <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's so good to see Linus doing all this wonderful work. <laughs> a couple things in that. Um, this is going to bring support out of the box for the Raspberry Pi touch display. That's neat. Yes. Good news for that. And this sounds like a little thing unless you have a <laughs> UHD display. There's going to be a new font for, you know, 3840 by 2160. One, the size that you're actually going to be able to read, ladies and gentlemen. You don't yes. have to go, oh, man, I hope this picks up on one of the other monitors, because if not, it's going to be challenging. One thing that didn't make it in was WireGuard. No, no, mm -hmm. no, no, no. <laughs> it's, uh, it will be interesting to see when it does come out, if it does come out. Mm -hmm. But uh, about the uh, the font, that's actually Terminus, which is already a font that mm -hmm. is available. It's just that they made it far more um, UHD or high DPI friendly. So yes. if you have like a teeny tiny screen with a very big resolution, like say you're trying to run Linux on a tablet. Yeah, this is going mm -hmm. to help a lot. Uh, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, FreeSync. It's, NVIDIA announced that uh, basically everything that's FreeSync has at least a chance of working with their G-Sync technology. And, you know, Linux users as we are, chances are, it, you probably have an NVIDIA car at leg about. So, yeah. Yeah, it's good news. Very good Down news. With that. Yeah. Always happy <laughs> to see new things. Until they do this. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> LKML, <laughs> Linux kernel mailing list, uh, Pavel writes, hey man, generic RGB LED support. Let's do that. Let's put that in the kernel because we all hate Vin and that'd be great. Uh, <laughs> they are talking about other requirements for an RGB LED interface uh, for, you know, user space should be able to set a white color and all the other arbitrary stuff that goes along with that. And... I don't think we need this. And I, this is a per personal preference. Um, on principle, there's no technical reason why this shouldn't be included. I just think, no. I mean, no. RGB controllers are a thing. Like, hardware RGB controllers are a yes. thing. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Good luck finding so, something without RGBs, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong. I'm absolutely with you on this one. Uh, also, because RGB drivers are the brand spanking new attack vector for malware. It's, yes. uh, oh, look at all these drivers by all these companies that don't properly security vet their own software. And now it's full of malware. So, yeah, it's it, that is a door I'm not too uh, keen on poking, as it were. So yeah, it's a. Uh, I'll have to. Mm -hmm. I'll have to see with the on the Steam box to see uh, once the <laughs> vanilla kernel repo with you know the 5.0 and the RGB stuff. If I can actually mess around with the uh, LEDs in there, it'll be interesting to see. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, this just seems like <laughs> selling Linux like drugs to kids. Like, hey, Aww. kids, look, you can make things go blink. <laughs> you can get well, all your RGBs. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy now that some of my uh, motherboards with uh, RGB support uh, will work under Linux. That's always a good thing. And I don't have to keep them in default mode. <laughs> so yeah. I can actually, we'll be able to play around with it. And, um, you know, there's lots of Raspberry Pi projects um, that need um, um, RGB LEDs. So um, that's really cool for them, including, of course, holiday light displays which will make it a lot easier to create that those in Linux. <laughs> you know, maybe this should go in because like legit, I, all seriousness, if it has an option for off. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Well, that will it be will. there. I'm sure. Yeah. Th that's part of the reason why they want to introduce. It's like, okay, you can have just yeah. regular, you know, a white background. So it shines through <laughs> the uh, little transparent layer on the, uh, the key. So you can have your backlighting be sensible. That sounded, no, let's not go there. No, uh, um, <laughs> like 100%, even though I can't see it, it bothers me that there's like nine red LEDs on the back of my motherboard. Oh, 
Ben the one doesn't on like this one has like a strip. <laughs> has like a strip of plastic that all lights up. <laughs> and it's like, go away. And I've looked into like, can I clip those? And I'm like, no, they're surface mount. And he was like, we have, we can do this. It's like, I'm not going to hose the board. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> okay. Maybe that'll be a thing. Um, one way or the other. Yeah. We'll get some good news in the automotive, oh. uh, you know, Linux and cars, right? Car analogy. Yes. Oh, definitely. Um, Hyundai joins auto, the automotive grade Linux uh, project and the Linux Foundation. Uh, this is this is really really awesome. They join the likes of Jaguar, Land Rover, Nissan, Toyota, Fujitsu, Nvidia, and Samsung, just to name a few. And what's really cool is that this announcement comes at the heels of the automotive grade Linux Linux Foundation convention in Las Vegas, which is being held in conjunction with CES 2019. Really, really cool. And uh, this makes sense because CES is the fifth largest auto tech show in the world. And that was uh, set on stage by Shapiro, the president of the CES. <laughs> So, yeah, it's really, really, you know, because Linux on cars is a thing and we need a, a unified framework for Linux uh, for all the different dealers and all the different makers of cars. So this is really, really important, important for safety. It's important for openness, openness and transparency. So yeah. I was really excited about this announcement. <laughs> and it's it's a car. It's basically half a ton of metal and plastic that's driving you down the road, or a full ton if you get a bigger car. Uh, yeah. It's you kind of want some proper vetting in the software and the firmware that makes nowadays cars run because it's all digital nowadays. Even the freaking um, handbrake is digital, so yeah. it's. Yeah, it's uh, you kind of want all of that to be in front of as many eyes as possible so that any and all issues are discovered long before the tires are ever put on those rims. So, yeah, uh, Hyundai joining the uh, AGL is a very good thing, and it uh, basically adds them to the list for whenever I can afford to buy a car. Tesla, <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tesla is like the big yeah. one, obviously. <laughs> I'm not only big one. Uh, Joe, will you do me a favor? Yes. <laughs> will, will you say Jaguar one more time for me? Uh, uh, I, yeah, I know I said it wrong. <laughs> it's I said Jaguar, but it's Jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Banana Jag Jag <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, uh, well, uh, as if we didn't already have enough uh, projects claiming to want to bring the very first viable Linux phone to the market, well, there's another one. Uh, it's the Nekunos. Uh, the NC1 and the NE1 uh, prototypes will be available later this year, and... Uh, the price, well, Ven's going to get to you on the price, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a completely bare bones <laughs> phone software wise. And you can, uh, this first run is dedicated to developers. It's a development kit. That's what they are. Uh, and uh, they are basically going to send out the phones, no operating system, nothing on them. And people are expected to develop the, uh, well, the platform uh and i'm not entirely sure this is just my opinion here but i'm not entirely sure uh giving people that much freedom you know including os development is going to be a good idea or it's even a good way to start because uh most of these are just going to end up running android and people just tend to freeze up whenever they're granted uh, so many possibilities. That's why a lot of people come to Linux and say, oh, mm -hmm. I can do this and I can do that and I can do this and I can do that. And they eventually just go back to Windows or Mac because that restricts their choices and they don't have to think about what they're going to do. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised you don't use Apple products after that. <laughs> but i like those possibilities i like those choices i may not be a developer but i like all of that <laughs> that's definitely a thing um, yeah. no operating install no operating system install jill 
Yeah, well, that's for the NC1. The NE1 to have a hard, um, uh, Linux security oper operating system on it because that's for the, the corporate um, uh, playing field. So the NC1, um, yeah, as Pedro was saying, um, will will allow you to put your own operating system on it. And we have lots of choices. Uh, there's Plasma Mobile, Post Market OS, Mimo Leste, Nemo Mobile, and even one of my favorites, LunaOS of WebOS ports. My beloved WebOS, yes. <laughs> so this is one of the, the uh, open WebOS initiatives. It's LunaOS by WebOS ports. And um, it, actually, I've ha I have that running on um, my OnePlus One phone, and it runs really nicely. And But the Nakunos uh, NC1 unit, uh, does not have a cellular modem or a SIM card yet. It truly is a developer phone, like Ben was saying. Yeah. So. Because <laughs> <hard. laughs> um, what we're looking at, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, 1,199 euros. Mm -hmm. It was a dev kit that is oh, yes. <laughs> kind of crippled, if we're being honest, yeah. uh, for a dev kit. And, you know, I get the whole idea of this, the whole top-down security pitch, but it's a five-inch mobile <laughs> device, you know, no SIM, and it's going to be reliant on you to roll your own system Everything. for apps. And <laughs> I, I get it from in, in one hand, and the other hand, I also get it, I'm like, this is not going to fly. Um you know, I don't think there's going to be a large enough market for these, but, you know, 100% love to be proven wrong. Yeah, but, yeah, definitely. You know, there we've are... seen things like, you remember when uh, Canonical did their marketing survey, I mean, Kickstarter pro or Indiegogo or whatever it was, Yeah, mm -hmm. the marketing research, uh, mm -hmm. and they were like, yeah, all right, maybe not. Uh, if that's too hard to sell, uh, this... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that was canonical. Canonical is pretty big, yeah. especially here in the UK. Uh, <laughs> Neck, you know, it's like, okay, <laughs> I dare you to walk up to some person on the street and, you know, if they don't club you to death immediately afterwards, ask them if they know what the hell uh, Neck, you know, is. Chances are yeah. you don't. <laughs> I know. All right. Uh, before we get out of here, last and definitely least... I made a thing. Maybe you bought a, what, oh, it was over the holidays yay. when the Fire HD 10 was a mere 99 wet stinky American caches like I did. And you're like, oh, this is neat. And like, oh my God, this interface is horrible. Get it away. Burn it. <laughs> <laughs> because this Android, kind of, it has the Fire Launcher and it does everything through Amazon, which in all fairness, I gave it the old try for five uh. possibly seven minutes and it was like we, we got to get rid of this <laughs> so i made a little guide so you can open a can of root and wash away that amazon weirdness now you can't put a different <laughs> rom on it yet but we're working on that you can get rid of most of it and what this guide will walk you through is getting it rooted which is hey. not that hard. You got to fuzz the kernel. And once you do that, you'll be able to kill the fire launcher and put on Nova, Google Now Launcher, or Apex, Trebuchet, anything like that. And it's pretty easy to walk through. I adapted a couple of different guides on XDA that unfortunately all started out with use this Windows application. Like, no, that's not going to work. <laughs> so long as you can install ADB, on your Linux box, you'll be able to walk through this and um, get Super SU on there and whatever mm -hmm. launcher you want and have a good time with it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not a bad tablet for 99 bucks. I don't know. Like at full price, it's like 140. You, you it, it tablets. Okay. <laughs> it's a media consumption uh, thing. It's not a gaming yeah. tablet. <laughs> yeah. Gaming tablet. <laughs> <laughs> I have two of those. Yes, you do. <laughs> They're the prototypes for the Switch. Marketing department, man. <laughs> it's a gaming type. NVIDIA shields are really good. Um, but yeah, media... Very sensibly priced for the performance that they give you. Yeah. I mean, when they're not exploding. Yeah. That was the first run, <laughs> and none of them exploded. They recalled them all. <laughs> Except, you know, for the one that I kept. 
Uh, I do want to point out that this only works on the Fire HD 10 2017s. The mm. 7 and 8s are completely different hardware, different beast. So yes. <laughs> maybe you want to take the Pepsi challenge on that. I did it because I'm me and I want to get titanium back up on there and add away. Didn't mm -hmm. need it because that tablet sits on the desk and switches the show. That's all it does. It was cheaper than the Elgato Stream Deck and it has a lot <laughs> less RGBs on it. And more real estate for buttons. <laughs> Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> um, hey, we got to pay the bills right quick and you help us do that. And maybe if you want to... Mm -hmm. You know, like, hey, I, I like your show. I like this freeware experiment where you just put everything out for free. You can make our <laughs> dreams come true. Kick us a few shackles uh, by becoming a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We've got some rewards to throw back in your direction. I also did a studio, 2019 studio. I, won't, I don't like calling it tour for 2019 and walked around, showed you how everything was made and put together wired it's about seven minutes and it's open to questions uh, i tried to be as informative as i am which isn't much but that's the thing and if you want to see us walking through it you know jordan pedro and myself we did that on the pre-pre super shows and which you can also get access to through that in your podcast device reader thingy there's also a video version of that for patrons you get early access to a few things we time gate stuff. We don't like exclusive access. It's kind of a D move. So, uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, show note access. We got a bunch of new patrons. So yes. look out for that <clears throat> at two fifty and above. You get access to the pre pre super shows and that's going to be live. We do on Saturdays. You can chime in and, uh, but I'll put a thing out for show notes cause you can also get access for that. And that's a manual system that I've kludged together. So <laughs> look for that post if you want to get everything re up for 2019 we got some people to thank this week jill yes yes we have mr amish yay thank you so much and matthew f really really cool yay okay uh, the, does the rest of the amish community know that you're doing this mr amish Dude, that's, <laughs> that's how the amish roll listen he's got air power internet <laughs> oh the, the amish have the internet now okay yeah that's air power it doesn't use electricity <laughs> that's I, listen that's kind of a thing look it up i'm like it comes from not space joking. halfway not joking on that um that's kind of brilliant. Thanks for everyone shopping through the uh, Humble links, our affiliate links. That's awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. That's great. That's cool. You let us Yay. do this. So, unfortunately, we don't get to do any mm -hmm. mattress ads. Yeah, <laughs> no mattress ads. Also, we don't have to worry about YouTube and dancing to that crap. You're like, hey, what's popular yeah. this week? You know, you might not like what we say, but you know we're being honest with you. You got that yeah. promise from us. <laughs> All right. Um, yes. Ta da! A slice, slice of, of pie! pie. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's, well, it's mm -hmm. ZDNet, and uh, it was the end of the year, so they figured, let's do <laughs> like a roundup of all of the Raspberry Pi alternatives for 2019. And it did. And in doing yes. so, okay, a lot of those. Okay, I agree with most of those. There's <laughs> just one that I take issue with, which is the uh, $359 uh, latte uh, panda, which comes yes. with the Intel... Uh, it looks like a freaking uh, video card, uh, but it comes with an Intel um, SoC, and it's just way, mm -hmm. way stupidly overpriced for a what is supposed yeah. to be a list of Raspberry Pi alternatives. Raspberry Pi alternatives. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. I would I would even <laughs> allow like that ninety nine dollar one. That's okay. That's still you know two digits. That's still reasonable. Three hundred and sixty dollars. Uh, yes. What? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why do you I hate agree, consumerism, <laughs> hippie? Oh. No, I hate uh, the inclusion of that particular one. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you, should, you just wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I was happy that the Vocore 2 made honorable mention. Um, it is a coin-sized Linux computer that is totally open source and costs only 20 bucks. And the BBC Microbit, yay! I've been wanting to play with that one. I still need to order that one. That one is so very, very cool. 
And the orange pie and banana pie both didn't make the list, which I found very, very interesting. And uh, the Beagle Bone series and Pocket Beagle are a few of my faves favorites as well. And I have links to those in the show notes. So uh, for the orange, orange pie, banana pie, and Beagle Board computers. They are all awesome <laughs> and belong in that list. <laughs> yeah. Even throwing in the yeah. lip potato and ZD Net, 16 pages, not going to happen. Uh, not clicking through that. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> was... A lot of people, I'm, I'm looking at Shot Realm right now, and they're like, Risk V's not in there. And I'm like, no. I know. No, but you want, you, want to, you, you want to get used to choking down about 300 bucks for your dev board? That's going to rhyme yeah. with Risk V. <laughs> Guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? You would like a Raspberry Pi Zero sized uh, Risk V board? Yeah, you're dropping about three hundred and something dollars on it. Uh, yeah, you're going to see because most Risk V stuff's going to be shipping with fancy things like SATA controllers and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all that other wacky nonsense. But well, they did have that uh, Micro ATX motherboard. Still waiting on that one. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, we even talked about that ARM board, man. It's got NVMe. Yeah. I'm like, ooh. Yeah. Mm. And then you look at the price and you're like, ooh. Mm. <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Two different versions. Okay. Uh, that's our bit of pie this week. Uh, contact yeah. if uh, send us your Linux questions, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Linux questions mm. or Raspberry Pi projects that you've done yourself. Or if you just like to brag about how much the haiku is better than Linux or how much uh, BSD is going to be the future of gaming, let us know. You're wrong, but let us know anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to lacegamecast.com. You just hit the contact button. Uh, make sure to pick LWDW from the little choosy box and uh, fill out the form. It's pretty easy. We will be very happy to feature your message right here, right now. Mm -hmm. Of course, Excellent uh, Patreon comments also an option. Patreon <laughs> comments. That's great. Uh, YouTube, you can do that, but don't hate on us if we don't see them or get to them. Yeah. And, although, <laughs> yeah. we did have one. We did. Yeah. We did. Um, sometimes we get to a little lump. I mean, it's what's there and what's available. We threw YouTube. I like throwing that disclaimer because we have a thousand YouTube videos that people leave comments on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It can get lost. <laughs> anyway, I like this first one mainly because it's Colin Pedro Dami. I don't know. Maybe yeah. there's a connection. <laughs> Oh, this comes from Angle D. Um, it must be Frosty. No. <laughs> Pedro is a dummy for not replacing the bootloader in that Chromebook and using it as a regular Linux laptop. I had that same Chromebook about two years ago. Oh, man, you actually have his Chromebook. How did it make it all the way to Britannia? And that's how I used to use it. Winky face. Blown heart. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, so here's the thing. Uh, the reason I don't put, uh, I don't replace a bootloader on this particular Chromebook and just use it like any other uh, Linux laptop is because, give me a moment. <laughs> if I reach over here, I can grab, say, a T42, which is from 2005, and it runs regular Linux. Or, say, I reach a bit further, and I have this, uh, HP Elite. Book I'm only from, allowing uh, this because he might drop something. <laughs> so uh, from uh, this one is from 2015 or 2016, and it also runs regular Linux. So yeah, I, it, it's interesting to have Chrome to see what Google does with it, and I don't really yeah. need another just pure Linux laptop. Let's be honest. <laughs> also, if that is your Chromebook, why did you put Chrome back on it before giving it to Pedro? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm curious. Uh, what do we have up next, Jill? Yeah, so this is from Viper29. I know that a 290X did not have HDMI 2.0 on its ports, so my 4K monitor could not do 60 hertz, only 30 hertz. I just reverted to a 1080p 144 hertz monitor with an RX 580 using display port and smooth selling on Linux. Yes, Viper 29, uh, the AMD drivers have really, uh, open source drivers have really, really, really come a long way. So yeah, um, I have an RX 560 and it runs beautifully as well on 1080p monitors. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, we were talking hey, about like, uh, being able to do 4K over uh, HDMI. HDMI. Yeah. yeah, HDMI, yeah. And you need mm -hmm. HDMI 2.0 or uh, DisplayPort 1.4. Yes. So uh, those are the requirements. But the thing or the irony here is that RX 580 would be able to push DisplayPort um, 1.4 and you could totally do uh, 3840 by 2160 at 60 yeah. FPS. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Are we had a... Uh... That's one of the things I'm going to be playing around with. If, if you missed the memo, the NVIDIA finally got me with it. 26. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Fine. You can mm -hmm. have money. That's uh, uh, 350. 350. For the yeah. But it's got a USB C that might be able to work. And I plan on using it for a video mm -hmm. encoder, but it might be fun to play around and see what kind of monitoring mm -hmm. we can get it to do. Oh, mm -hmm. JTAG to 2060. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? I will. That's going to be the company 2060. So I don't have the whole problem with smoking it. I'm like, yeah. Oh well. <laughs> company funds. Not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks I'm joking, and I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Oh, I, here's the thing. I don't think you're joking. <laughs> I know for a fact that that would be a thing that happened. I just hope yeah. that you uh, have the uh, Record it. presence of mind to put a video camera exactly. on it. Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. So you get a free license here at LGC to do something stupid as long as you get it on tape. Yep. That That's kind of a company motto. All right. Uh, we're going to bounce out of here. We'll see you next week. And uh, it's going to be awesome. We're going to roll some credits and thank everyone who's helping out. Yeah, I'm we love you, chat room. Oh, yes. <laughs> Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. How about that? What if we just do a silent? <laughs> oh, could. no music. I mean, Aww. chances are you could just mute this and uh, post it. It's fine. <laughs> Everything's better in post. <laughs> Yay, executive producers. <laughs> Yay, and Everyone. all our beautiful producers. I like that we have just the letter O. As one of our yeah. producers? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, oh, O'Reilly. Auto pass. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe it? Episode 152. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I've been here for a while. I'm sure I sure can. <laughs> yes. <laughs> bye. Yes. Bye-bye, chat room. Love you.